Hello, my soccer universe. The 50th season of the Austrian Bundesliga gets underway this upcoming Friday, July 28th. And yes, I'm gonna preview and share you my thoughts on this upcoming season. However, it's not quite correct to say that the season starts this Friday because the season has already started with a cup round where I give you the results here. And you can see that of the top 10 teams from the last season that all of these advanced to the next round more or less easy uh, with the only one that had a little bit trouble being uh, Wattens or VSG Tirol uh, who had to go to overtime in Barcelabach which is a town that is kind of nearby but all the other ones were rather easy Lusk took some time but in the end it's also a clear result uh, I also want to point out that the um, team between SAK Klagenfurt and Sturm Graz was actually uh, delayed because of a thunderstorm. So far for the cup, but now we are focusing on the 50th uh, Bundesliga season. Now, um, this is the 50th Bundesliga season. There have been other leagues before, which means that uh, there have been champions, of course, before, and there's a long history behind that. First, uh, before the war, it was only a purely Viennese league. Then it opened up to a national league. It was called National League, and then they founded the Bundesliga and in order to commemorate the start of a dead Bundesliga we used the same fixture to start the Bundesliga as it was in 1974 which was Lusk against Rapid which is actually a pretty pretty big fixture on the Austrian calendar back then Lusk won 2-1 let's see how it will go forward there also in order and the first champions of that official Bundesliga season was of course uh, Wacker Innsbruck or Wacker Wattens Tirol because that's a rather complicated story. But you can see there are many stories that I could tell and I actually have decided in order to celebrate this 50th season, um, I actually wanna ahead of every home game give you a short video on the opponent that Lusk is about to play and so very shortly you will get a video on my thoughts on the first opponent for Lusk this season which is of course Rapid Wien. The big one one would like to say so uh, this is one thing I'm gonna do uh, in between you will also get towards the beginning of the season and I have to see I hope I'll get a uh, nice pictures of each of the jerseys but I'm wanna uh, do of course an Austrian Bundesliga jersey review as well which I wanna get in before all the other leagues start but let's see how time will allow that or you get it latest uh, mid-August when I have a bit more information and I actually want to try to go solo in with the Austrian Bundesliga this time around, meaning I will not uh, jam them together with the German Bundesliga. I want to make shorter videos and therefore uh, you will get reviews. I'm not sure if it will be weekly, but at least by weekly, probably after every home game, uh, I'm going to give you of Lusk. I'm going to give you a little review as well. So, after all that, what we're going to do in my soccer universe uh, with this uh, Austrian Bundesliga season, let's see what are the teams that are playing in this league. And it's the same teams that we had last year, except for one. Uh, Ried, a local rival of Lask, got uh, re relegated. And it's the city rival Blauweiss Linz, who got promoted in kind of slightly a little bit contentious circumstances, but they have been the favorites all along. Now, what it is remarkable uh, this time, time around, if you look at last year's video, I showed you the stadiums in the Austrian Bundesliga are really, really good. They got even better this time around because first and foremost, Lusk moved to a new stadium already beginning of this year. I made plenty of videos about that and it is really, really exciting to have another top class stadium in the league. But we also have the Blauweiss Linz is opening the season with a brand new stadium. In my opinion it's a little bit small but we have in Linz now two Bundesliga already stadiums which is something that no one would have expected. Now some of the stadiums are getting up there in age. Uh, Sturm Graz definitely would like to uh, renew their stadium and, and uh, you know modernize it but it's still not in their possession. They have a little bit trouble there. Um, we also have that Lustenau is going to build a new stadium, meaning that they will start the season in the old, kind of old looking stadium, but then move uh, to Bregenz while their new stadium is built. So Vorlbeck will have two really good looking stadiums, uh, small size, but still. 
and then it's only the following statement Austria clang for the stadium situation they have the most beautiful stadium in Austria however no one is coming to watch the games so they may look to downtown so that's one uh, point of contention there we have Wolfsburg another team Corinthia Kenton that you know probably would need a better stadium because it's still of the old style with the running track and you know only two big stands but you know it's a smaller town uh Hartberg is already thinking about a new stadium as well because they're barely getting the license for the league with the stadium that they're currently holding and then we have the situation in Tyrol where they like Klagenfurt they play in a stadium that's way too big for them not even the hometown because they have to play in Innsbruck because the stadium is way too small they also would like to get a new one there but other than being the Red Bull Arena in Salzburg, being the new Lask Stadium, being the Weststadion in uh, Vienna, I try to use as much as possible uh, traditional names. We have the Viola Park uh, for Austria Vienna. We have then, uh, of course, the Schnabelholz in Altach. All these are great little stadiums. And it's really, really exciting to see that the Austrian Bundesliga, coming from a perceived village league, to really get into a more modern looking league and last year the championship around all great stadiums there. Um, if you look at the map down here uh, we also see that there is still uh, this kind of clustering happening. We have like four teams in the southeast and we have the two Vienna teams that are up there. Uh, Linz is now another cluster. Uh, Salzburg you can move there and then we have the west cluster with Lucena, Altach and Tirol. Maybe Salzburg, Tirol, you know, uh, wherever you want to draw the lines. But uh, it is, while it's all Austria, why, why is there such, such a big hole in the middle? Because they're the Alps, there are no big cities in there. But that's another feature. When if we look at the coaching changes, actually a lot of things have done. And I'm including all the coaching changes happened already during the past season. Uh, the one that's most known, not it was probably the Dietmar Kuba, and I made a video that was sacked as last coach right after the end of the season, like a day after, and they hired the assistant coach from Liefering in Thomas Sageda, uh, who has been also assistant coach to Oliver Glasner, has always been also a coach being of blau weiss Linz before. Um, young coach, we have to see. Uh, it might be that they're going back to the old, more uh, counter-pressing at fully attacking style that Lask very known for and maybe this is where they were going. Uh, at Rapid, yes, they, hire, they fired uh, Coach Feldhofer uh, early last, last season to be as replaced by Zoran Barisic, an old um, uh, their sporting director, Austria Vienna, got the assistant coach from Stuttgart halfway through the season, uh, having sacked Manfred Schmidt, who then took over at Wolfsberg. Uh, who had fired Robin Dutt. Most curiously, uh, Cla uh, Klaus Schmidt got gets let go twice last season. Now, uh, in Hartberg, they had to change and they got shopping because Hartberg was in real trouble. And then he got hired by Alltag for the second part of the season because he is kind of the uh, guy who will get you the Sam Allardars, if you like, of the Austrian League. And he got Altach safe, and now they go with Standfest, who was also an assistant coach at Altach under him. So, loads of changes on the coaching circle. Um, the most important is that Jaisle and Ilze for Salzburg and Sturm are still in place, meaning those two will potentially be the overall favorites. Uh, speaking of overall favorites, uh, you see here the expected final regular season change uh, standings and then the uh, expected final standings. Uh, why is that? Because the Austrian League has this weird, weird cycle where they play uh, the 12 teams, play each other twice, once away and then home. And then they split the league in a championship round and in a bottom round. And most crucially is that in the championship round, of course, you get the Champions League, you get the second place. And then there is also a playoff at the end that if the cup winner is not among the teams in the top two, then the Europa League spot will go to third place team. Uh, and then it's for the Conference League, where only the sixth place team cannot get in there, but there might be a seventh place team from the lower in last season, even the eighth place team made it. Loads of talking there. Uh, we have, of course, the big champions are Salzburg, and you see the big green dot to the very left. 
they have a 70% chance already of winning this title again. And this would be the 11th one in a row. Last season run, it was rather, rather tight with Sturm Graz, uh, who now have a 17%. Lusk uh, is in the cluster of the rank outsiders together with Austria Vienna and the Rapid Wien. Uh, the errors on the left by, by the way, show the difference to the uh, final season standings last time around. I think Lusk is probably ahead of the two Viennese clubs from what they have shown last season. And given that they have bought many, many, many players, many interesting players, I think they might want to challenge at least the second place of Sturm Graz. But let's see. On the bottom, blau Linz is just hanging on for now as the newly promoted team. But given the history of newly promoted teams, I can very well imagine them having a rather safe season overall. That's uh my thoughts on that uh as i said already for lusk that's my expectations i actually think the expectation should be a third place to be frank um i think that salzburg and sturm graz due to continuity are still a little bit better although both teams and i mean continuity on the coaching position uh, both teams still have uh, lost important players. However, on the other side, the last goalkeeper and captain Alexander Schlager went to Red Bull Salzburg, uh, which shows you the pull of that team. And they also have high, um, have already acquired some interesting players. Same thing goes for Sturm Graz. So despite losing players like Noah Okafor, Emega and 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 so on, I think they are still very well settled. However. Lask definitely made a very big offensive on the transfer market, getting very interesting players in. Um, my only concern is that, you know, he will need to get some time getting used to the new playing system under Coach Sargeta, which might cost, cost them uh, enough points to actually really challenge for a second spot. But hey, I be I am ready to be positively surprised overall. I'm really looking forward to it. I also think that Lask will probably lose the best player from last season, Nakamura, because there is already an offer of more than 10 million on the market. And I'm sure that Lask want to cash in on him. He would be the most expensive player ever sold. And I'm even not sure that other players will not be still sold because the squad is very top heavy or very front heavy at the moment. Not too many midfielders. So lots of things still to be seen now the first fixtures i already said the opening fixture will be lask against rapid and you see i'm using and i saw it before i'm using the round logo for Lask because you voted for that one i actually like that one better even though it's very similar to sturm graz uh Lask rapid is the outstanding fixture uh, the outstanding fixture of the first round it is two very traditional teams two big teams and you know at 8 30 i'm really looking forward to that game um I actually think that Lask have to be considered favorites in, in, in the, because for Rapid at the moment things are not looking all that great. We have another big one in Austria Vienna against Sturm Graz. Uh, all the other ones have kind of clear faith if a favorite. Maybe uh, the the two K the Hartberg Lustenau and Tirol Klagenfurt are not so clear. And then I also give you for the upcoming round with another top uh, heavy um, tough game for Lask. We have to play, go to Vice Champion Sturm Graz. This could already be one of the most interesting games of the season. And then I think it also in Linz opening the new stadium in the Bundesliga between blau Linz and Hartberg. It could already point the way where blau Linz will go this time around. But then there's only the uh, Carinthia Derby, Klagenfurt and Wolfsburg that might be interesting as well. That's it. For me, uh, for now, for the Austrian Bundesliga, as I said, I am excited. The Austrian Bundesliga has come out in its own. It's becoming, thanks to Salzburg and then other teams following them, has become a very uh, offensive league, a league that is fun to watch. Um, and thanks to traditional teams like Rapid Vienna and Austria, uh, Austria Vienna and Sturm Graz, among others, and don't want to mention others. Uh, there's also, you know, you see interesting fan scenes and so on. Uh, and I also see more and more people going to the stadium, which is also something that was not always the case. So it's an exciting time. The big question, of course, is will Salzburg get an 11th title or will one of the contenders, Sturm or Lask, finally break that spell? It has been way too long. I think 10 years in a row is more than enough. 
And I want to finish with probably the most, um, the biggest bombshell news in Austria that was already last week that Salzburg Sporting Director Christoph Freund is still doing a transfer business, but starting in September, he will be the new Sporting Director at Bayern Munich, which shows you the standing that the Austrian Bundesliga meanwhile enjoys in Europe. Please let me know who you think will win uh, this time around. Will it Salzburg again or will it be someone else? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little preview. And I will talk to you soon and more about the Bundesliga. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and plays that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.